sustainable development goals. This reflects the outcome of the NGA overall re review of the implementation of the VCIS, which called for a close alignment between the VCIS process and SDG process, recognizing that ICTs will play a crucial enabling role for the achievement of all 17 SDGs. The VCIS forum serves as a key platform for discussing the role of ICTs as a mean of implementation of the SDGs. The VCIS prize will be awarded during the opening ceremony of the VCIS forum, and I would like to invite you to nominate your projects for this prestigious award by the 2nd of January 2018. This is Forum 2018 will continue to innovate with fresh ideas and activities through TEDx, virtual reality for development with a special focus on education, drones for social good, hackathon on hack against hunger, and interactive panel discussions giving opportunities for all VC stakeholders to join, co-create, implement, and make a real difference. ITU is deeply committed to increase youth engagement and participation in the forum. This year, next year, 2018, this forum will feature several activities designed to encourage youth engagement and participation, including workshops, training sessions in virtual reality, and presentations by young innovators. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I would like um, I would like to, I would like to uh, thank you for all attending the first physical meeting today, and we look forward to your inputs to ensure an even more dynamic, interactive, and outcome-oriented VCIS Forum in 2018. The success of VCIS Forum, of course, depends on the contribution to the VCIS Fund in Trust. So we look forward to generous contributions that will avail the visibility that partnership offers. We'd like to thank the early birds for confirming the partnership. Let me call out their names as a token of our appreciation. Rwanda, Switzerland, Poland, ICANN, Swiss Engineering. As you are aware, the agenda and program of this forum are built through an open consultation process the outcomes of this meeting will also feed into the, this process, and I would like to remind you to please submit your request by 20 of January 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your presence here. Thank you for your attention, and we are looking forward for a very successful VCIS Forum 2018. Thank you very much. Uh, we'd like to highlight that uh, all VCIS uh, forum meetings and the open consultation meetings uh, are, uh, uh, provide remote participation facilities, and so is the case today. Uh, we are being followed by uh, remote participants as well. Welcome to the remote participants to the meeting as well. Um, I'd like to move on to Ms. Hu, uh, who's representing UNESCO today. Uh, please, could you provide your remarks? Uh, thank you so much, Chitam uh, Jali, and also ITU for inviting UNESCO to this important uh, consultation. And good morning, everyone, and, and many friends here and colleagues. It's so nice to see you here. Uh, UNESCO has been working with ITU so closely in the past decade. We are equally committed to following up and implementing with this key action lines in past years. We have been such a um, high time now even to advance more to highlight the ICT for development in the global agenda as a cross-cutting force, as a crucial tool to advance achieving the SDGs for every country. That's why we see such an important um, momentum now to have uh, uh, even more inclusive participation from all the countries and stakeholders and from different regions and culture. And UNESCO has been uh, uh, um, advocating uh, many norms at na international level, and now we see the uh, challenge now to the uh, ICT for development and also internet governance that uh, we're still in the process to face challenges, but uh, we are lack of the uh, sufficient norms and standard setting initiatives. 
groups. That's why, as my as UNESCO Assistant Director General Frank LaRue addressed in the opening ceremony, we are uh, advocating internet universality and norms and, fr and the frameworks and now in the global level. We, we believe that uh, only through a human rights-based internet, uh, an open internet, uh, an internet uh, accessible by all, and also an internet governance driven by the multi-stakeholder participation, um, only through this we can achieve the inclusive information society and also knowledge societies in the end which will be uh, well contributing to the uh, peace and sustainable development for the, for, the, for the society. And lastly, I also like to uh, call again to our stakeholder here and also remotely, uh, because we have been working uh, heartily to engage with different sectors from governments, from private sector, from civil society, from media, from academia in the past years to get them involved in the WISIS implementation and the WISIS forum. Uh, and concretely, we have been working on the six action lines, uh, such as action line C3, access, action line C7, the e-learning, and action line C9 on media, action line C8 on culture diversity, and action line C10 ethics. This seems a quite a soft aspect of WISIS actions, but they are very important and more and more important in the, in the, for the future to shape the digital future and development in every country. So uh, I do uh, share what uh, my ITU colleague had just said, that I uh, wish the process would be continually so open and uh, participatory, and UNESCO is ready to provide uh, our uh, continuous support and facilitation in this process. Thank you. Thank you, UNESCO. I'd like to invite uh, Scarlett from Ongtad to please uh, add some updates. Uh, thank you very much, Gitanjali. So um, I, we won't get tired of uh, expressing Ongtad's uh, happiness to be collaborating with uh, our co-organizers to hold this WSIS uh, forum. In 2018, in particular, um, we've from 2017 to 2018, we've seen the WISIS Forum as a part of an ongoing dialogue on the digital economy, which, uh, as you might be aware, is ONCTAD's uh, mandate. Uh, not only were there several sessions related to uh, themes to the, of the digital economy in the WISIS Forum 2017, but we hope and expect that it will be the case again in 2018. In the interim, UNCTAD has um, worked uh, with its member states on the same subject, and following the WISIS Forum 2018, we will have the e-commerce week the next month. So we are uh, increasingly uh, in having, enjoying the benefits of the WISIS Forum as a place where we can get inputs from um, stakeholders other than governments on the digital economy, which is profoundly transforming our society now. So I would like to encourage you as well to provide your inputs, not only on the substance of uh, the themes we will be discussing during the WISIS Forum 2018, but also on the trimmings, because, um, and, and this I believe uh, Gitanjali will address in the presentation, this has contributed to raise the profile of the subjects, even um, things that seem as, um, uh, tangential as the WISIS photo contest or the WISIS prizes. These are things that in the end uh, give us a lot of visibility in terms of the specific uh, subject matters of the information society and encourage participation not only from the different stakeholders but within those stakeholders youth. Youth is very interested in the hackathon for, for example or the TEDx, which was very well attended as well uh, last year, so this year. So um, I do encourage every one of you to provide your inputs, uh, keep uh, in mind the deadlines, and uh, we are really looking forward to more and more enriching discussions with you in the WISIS from 2018. Um, UNCTAD in particular will be uh, as co facilitator of the e-business action line, be discussing uh, the digital economy, inclusive e-commerce, and also we are long-standing contributors to the work on measuring ICT for development with a partnership. 
Thank you, Umtad, for these updates. Uh, we have a very short presentation to uh, familiarize you with uh, the work that is going on, the preparatory work that we are doing for the uh, upcoming WISIS Forum. Uh, uh, Vladimir, could you please uh, start the presentation? Okay, so uh, it's the most important thing, of course, the registration. This is what I have been receiving a lot of calls for. Uh, it will open uh, just one month before the VISIS Forum. Uh, please block these dates on your calendars. Uh, it's from the um, 19 to 23rd of uh, March, but the registration will open by the 15th of February. Um, the e-confirmation uh, will be the sole document that is provided for visa support because these are the questions that that we uh, receive uh, uh, very frequently. Uh, the badging will be located at the ITU headquarters in the uh, Maubryon building. Next slide, please. Uh, as you all know, WISIS Forum has a few building blocks. Uh, we have the high-level component that will take place on the uh, 20th and the 21st, that's Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, and the workshops, the action line facilitation workshops, the country workshops, thematic workshops, knowledge exchange would be, the forum component of the WISIS Forum would be taking place on the uh, 19th, uh, 22nd, and 23rd. Of course, uh, we've added the innovative components of virtual Reality, TEDx, and Hackathon, uh, of which we'll provide details later. Next slide, please. Uh, the higher level track, as I said, is on the 21st and the 20th of March. Um, the uh, letters for the ministers uh, have already been issued. And, um, uh, uh, and you can find the link uh, to request for a higher level speaking slot uh, online. Of course, this is multi-stakeholder. So we request you to please register the heads of your organization or any um, uh, senior official that you feel um, uh, should be present at the high level track during the WISIS Forum. Um, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so the uh, ITU Secretary General has conducted some um, informal consultations and uh, the chairman designate uh, uh, is, uh, is confirmed as uh, the Deputy Director General of TRA, uh, UAE. Uh, they have been uh, supporting the WISIS process and the WISIS forum in particular since uh, a very long time and we believe that um, his engagement will really add value to the, uh, to the WISIS forum. Next slide, please. Uh, again, the high-level track consists of the prizes. The prizes will take will be awarded during the opening ceremony, uh, which is on the uh, 20th. The high-level policy se sessions will be for two days. Uh, the ministerial roundtable, which is exclusively for uh, ministers, and the closing ceremony of the high-level track, where the conclusions of all the different high-level sessions are provided. Next slide, please. Um, well, as you know, since 2015, um, uh, after our chairman uh, from the U.S., Ambassador Daniel Supalveda, requested us to uh, make it more interactive, the high-level uh, policy sessions have high-level track facilitators, and these are facilitators from, uh, we have an open call. Uh, they are nominated from the civil society, academia, technical community, and the private sector. Uh, the deadline is 30th of January, so we request uh, a civil society society coordination groups, private sector coordination groups. I can see all of you are here. So please do submit your nominations uh, as soon as possible. And uh, it would be nice if you don't wait till the deadline so that we can organize it better. Uh, next slide, please. Of course, the ministerial roundtable, the details will be available much later, but this is just to give you uh, some guidelines to prepare the schedule of your ministers. Uh, it would take place on the 21st of March in the CCV Geneva room from 2 to uh, 4.30. Um, next slide. Uh, youth engagement. Uh, well, this has been a priority uh, now of the UN that uh, uh, any UN process should include the voice of the youth. And uh, at the WISIS Forum, uh, we are trying to engage with the youth as much as possible. But, uh, you know, it's very challenging because until they do not find any real value, uh, you know, in being part of the process, uh, they really wouldn't like to contribute. So any ideas would be very welcome. Uh, we are trying to 
do concrete things like the hackathon uh, with ILO. We are doing a session on uh, digital skills. Uh, so this would be a part of the uh, campaign that was launched, launched by ITU and ILO, uh, where we would be uh, getting some private sector organizations and some universities to look at the um, matching of the digital skills, that what is the requirement of the market, and what are the skills that are being taught uh, in the universities. So uh, is there a match or is there a mismatch? And then we would be having some training sessions on uh, virtual reality uh, for development. Our virtual reality partners would uh, uh, give some short trainings to the youth on how virtual reality can be used as an effective medium to portray development activities. So these are some of the concrete things that we have uh, thought about, but all ideas are very welcome. Uh, we encourage you to include youth in your delegations as well. Um, if you need any assistance from us, please do let us know. Next slide, please. Um, of course, we spoke about the hackathon. Uh, we would be doing this in collaboration with uh, FAO. Uh, it is titled Hack Against Hunger, and uh, basically it will focus on food security and hunger. Uh, it is on the 18th, which is a Sunday, 18th and 19th of uh, March. So university students and young people, so 18 to 32 is the um, uh, category that uh, we would be welcoming for this competition. It's a competition, yes. And uh, we would like you to, as in the past, uh, so we started it this year. Uh, we did it along with WHO on health. And uh, the um, outcomes were excellent, you know, and the people who, the, the students who won the uh, hackathon have also gone on to implement their applications on the field and on uh, various other levels. And this is what we want to see that's happening after that. Um, in fact, University of Norway, who uh, won the hackathon this year, came back to ITU and WHO and also tested their application in some of the countries where uh, WHO and ITU are working. So um, if you would like to support some uh, university students to be here uh, to participate in, your, uh, in the hackathon and to represent your country or your organization, um, you'd be most, uh, you know, we will be grateful and uh, you can ask us for any questions uh, that you have. We have put up some preliminary information on the page. Uh, so we wanted to respect the deadline. So uh, it's a quick job for today, but uh, please do have a look. The um, basic information is already available online. Next slide, please. Um, so as my colleagues already mentioned, the agenda and program are built through this open consultation process. There is a formal submission form. Uh, we've already started receiving a lot of requests. So this form is also to be used to request for workshops, for uh, exhibition spaces, to make presentations, to nominate speakers, and most necessarily to give us inputs on how uh, we could make changes on the format that would benefit the outcomes of the Business Forum and uh, certain topics that you would like us to ensure are dealt with at the WISIS Forum. So uh, this is the first physical meeting. The second physical meeting will take place on the 24th of January. Uh, this would be at the ITU uh, building. Um, the deadline, please do respect it because this year, the VIS, uh, next year, the WISIS Forum is in March, which is very early for the organizers as well. So we'd like to please uh, uh, request you to respect the deadline of 30th January. Next slide, please. Of course, we added the uh, photo contest because uh, after all, all that we are doing, we are striving to um, basically add value to what's happening on the gr ground. And uh, we received some fantastic photographs from uh, civil society, private sector, from individuals on the ground showcasing how ICTs are impacting uh, sustainable development. So if you do know of such groups that are doing wonderful work on the ground, please do encourage them to nominate uh, photographs for the photo contest. Uh, and um, uh, it's for all of you to use, actually, the photographs will be every year we will put them online and you can reuse the photographs whenever you wish you can contact us we can give you the higher resolutions so this we are collecting a database of uh, photographs on ICT for development which you can use whenever you wish it is open to all the stakeholders to use next uh, and the deadline of course is 9th of February next slide please 
Uh, the WISIS uh, prizes, of course, the deadline is 2nd of January. Um, and uh, we request you to please, it's really tight because it's the holiday period, but it's a very tight deadline, so we request you to please submit uh, the prizes as soon as possible. Um, of, uh, my colleague will brief us later on this, but uh, next slide, please. Of course, uh, you know, uh, the WISIS Forum wouldn't be possible at all without the generous contributions of our uh, partners. So we request you to please uh, become partners of the WISIS Forum. So uh, the partnership is, of course, a service-based partnership. So Geneva is a very expensive place, and the WISIS Forum is non-budgetary. So we really um, encourage you to support us and to become partners of the WISIS Forum. Uh, any uh, uh, any contributions to the uh, WISIS Forum are basically used to uh, strengthen the outcomes of the WISIS Forum. So we are encouraged to please uh, consider the partnership packages and get back to us if you are interested. Next, next slide, please. Uh, of course, as of today, uh, partner for specific activities are Rwanda and Switzerland. Contributing partners are Poland and ICANN, and supporting partner is Invest Swiss Engineering. Next slide, please. Uh, as you all uh, know that our schedules are so busy and at your request we have uh, uh, we have basically scheduled the dates till 2020 so please do note these on your calendar and you can already block your dates for the next few visits forums at the visits for pardon Yes, of course, thanks for pointing that out. Um, there is a mistake in the last one, it should be 30th of March. Of course, WISIS Forum is not so long. <laughs> so, uh, next slide, please, let me. Uh, okay, so um, this is it. This was just to provide you with a very quick update. Uh, we are very uh, active in our social media channels. Uh, the slide is somehow missing out there. Uh, please do use hash visis if you are following us on Twitter or if you are tweeting anything to do about the visis process. Um, we are active on Instagram since we started our photo contest, so please do visit us there. Uh, of course, our Facebook. Um, we received 5,000 likes, which is not much, considering that you know we have 2,500 stakeholders participating in the WISIS Forum every year. So please do be more active in our Facebook page because you can get a lot of information there. We post every day out there. And please join our WISIS Flash, which is our uh, monthly newsletter. Uh, the monthly newsletter consists of all the updates. In, uh, so all the updates you saw in the presentation, you would be getting it directly in your email if you subscribe to the monthly newsletter. So uh, thank you very much. This was just to provide you with an update. We are here to listen to you, and we'll very keenly take notes. Um, we also have our colleagues from uh, UNDESA present out here who are facilitators of Action Line C1, C11, and uh, C7 e-governance. Uh, could you please update us on the preparations that uh, UNDESA is doing towards the WISIS Forum? Thank you very much, madam. Thank you. Uh, yes, Marion Barthélémy from uh, DESA. And just to start by saying we really welcome the way the WISIS Forum has embraced the SDGs that have become so uh, cross-cutting. And as the department which supports the intergovernmental work on the SDGs in New York, we are very uh, happy to see that this happens. We are also supporting the IGF Secretariat, so it's being in the two is also very helpful. On these action lines, we facilitate. So through whatever we do in our meetings or analysis, we try to advance uh, the reflection on those topics because it's very important action lines too. It's about the role of all stakeholders, uh, international regional cooperation and uh, e-government. Uh, Last year, we had two facilitators meeting during the WISIS forum, and they were very useful to us. Uh, one was on the role of the private sector in implementing the WISIS and mobilizing technologies for the SDGs. 
and we got some general messages like on the importance of that role, the readiness of the private sector, but also specific ideas like the fact that the private sector uh, contributes most if you give it a specific problem, you know. So there were things that were very useful to us. Uh, same on e-government. Uh, we had a lot about how e-government can help to give uh, public services that really benefit people, but also uh, ideas such as the fact that you need to take some extra step if you want e-government to help to uh, eradicate poverty. So basically those meetings were very useful to us and we would like to have uh, two more this year. On uh, the one on e-government, I think we have already uh, an idea pretty much on what it should be because we are working on the e-government survey for next year and the theme is about uh, e-government and resilience. So we would like to hear from the participants in those meetings their views on the theme and uh, we will present preliminary results on this and on the trends in e-government. Uh, and then we can use the meeting as a stepping stone to finalize the survey. For C1 and C11, we would very much like to hear today from uh, the organizers of the WISIS forum with whom we will talk, but also from the audience uh, about the kind of theme that uh, you would like to discuss there. And uh, on our part, we've been thinking about, for example, the link between the strategies on uh, e-government and the strategies, the plans to implement the SDGs, how the government can bridge the two and uh, mobilize stakeholders, gear investment innovation towards the things that matter for the SDGs. So maybe a theme around those dimensions and then uh, uh, the importance of cooperation should be of course at the heart, uh, but we would be very much keen to hear what uh, everybody thinks. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, thank you, you and Desa. We really appreciate your contribution to the VISIS forum and the VISIS process, of course. Uh, you highlighted a very important uh, point that uh, the VISIS forum is completely aligned to the SDGs now, the VISIS action lines and SDGs. So the agenda is completely searchable by VISIS action lines and SDGs. So are the outcomes of each and every session. And uh, we have also aligned the VISIS prize contest uh, with the VISIS action action lines and SDGs. So um, it is convenient for the people following the SDG process as well as the VISIS process because everything is searchable uh, and it's all based on the matrix that was developed in 2014 by the VISIS action line uh, facilitators. Um, colleagues, the floor is open, so we are here to listen from you. Um, please feel free. There is a remote participant, please. Uh, so it's just a question regarding the dates of the of the with this prize contest. Uh, so Renata is asking if uh, it's possible to get an extension on the <laughs> on the date. Thank you. Uh, can you please repeat who is the question from? Who? Uh, from Renata Aquino. Renata. Okay. And which country? Uh, I don't know. Where are you from? All right. Um, I think I will uh, invite my colleague uh, Vladimir to provide a very quick update on the prizes and, of course, if we are planning to extend the deadline, which is the main question. Thank you very much. Uh, Renata, you just join us back in the room. Maybe you would like to present yourself. Uh, physical, <laughs> remote and physical. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm Renata Ribeiro. I, uh, um, first of all, thank you for this, uh, with this briefing. It is very useful for those of us who have participated uh, in the process. Um, I have, I, I posed the question I, as I just joined, I don't know if you had the opportunity to answer, but the WISIS prizes, if there was any possibility of making that deadline uh, a little bit <laughs> bigger. And uh, for the, um, another comment that occurred to me for the hackathon, there was the possibility to build teams on site if there will be this, this opportunity. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Renata. I'll take the question on the prizes, and then I'll move um, the question on the hackathon to Gitanjali. Um, uh, correctly, we do have a tight deadline. Uh, it's January 2nd, and we're really still start trying to um, reach this deadline, so we encourage you all to um, promote and uh, in, uh, also submit. I mean, this is really a unique uh, contest recognized by the international community, one of the unique contests for the ICT for SDG. And um, we are um, uh, very happy to uh, receive uh, lots of positive, positive input uh, from this ex-winners and ex-champion community. And um, besides encouraging you to submit and share this um, information about the deadline, I would also like to inform you that we are now discussing uh, with our ex-winners and champions uh, of the VSIS prizes how to engage them at the VSIS Forum 2018. Uh, let me remind you, the VSIS prizes started in 2012, and this is uh, now the, in the seventh edition of this uh, important activity. Um, we are receiving the input through the open consultation process on how to best shape the format and um, of this um, a new track, uh, so-called uh, alumni group of the ex-winners, pri prizes and champions. There are 108 winners since 2012 and 144 champions so far. Uh, and I invite all of, all of you also to um, help us um, uh, shape um, this track and see how uh, the experiences of receiving these prizes uh, have been um, uh, received back home uh, within their communities and networks. Uh, regarding the extension, uh, if there would be an extension, this will be announced only um, on, the, on, on the 3rd of January. Uh, so far, we are running until 2nd of January. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vladimir. Uh, for the hackathon question, uh, we would like to be well prepared. However, of course, if students land up uh, on the day of the hackathon, uh, we wouldn't send them back. But uh, uh, we would like to be well prepared and uh, form the teams beforehand. Uh, we are partnering with Geneva Hub who are very experienced at conducting hackathons. Um, so they are basically uh, formulating the teams beforehand, and it is our intention that the teams are well represented by the different qualities that the students bring in, like, for example, designers, uh, web developers, uh, you know, experts on food and agriculture, on nutrition. So if they are well-balanced team, teams, it would benefit the results of the hackathon. So we encourage you to please, uh, you know, already register. Thank you. Yes, sir, please. Hi, my name is Mario, uh, Mario Viola, I'm from Brazil. Uh, I would you like just to make a comment on the involvement, engagement of YOF and, and, and the WISES. So you mentioned that you were planning to do many things, the hackathon would be one of them. So I'd like to see to what extent UNICEF is engaged, since UNICEF has just published this report on the state of the world of children, on the children in the digital age, and they mention many things related to SDGs, internet governance, also I uh, would like to hear about the engagement of UNICEF and how you think to engage not only us, but children in general. Uh, thank you, sir. That's a very good point. Uh, we work very closely with UNICEF, but uh, and they have several workshops at the VSIS Forum focused on child online protection. But uh, of course, uh, we will get back to them on this uh, report, and uh, we will see how we can work with them. Uh, as far as so, there are two categories of. Uh, young generation, I guess we are looking at. So one is school children, and the second is from 18 to 35, if we can still call them young. But yes, I would like to. <laughs> so um, basically, um, the school children, uh, we are also working with our uh, uh, virtual reality partners to have a classroom uh, which will give them an experience uh, of virtual reality in education. So this is something we are also planning. But uh, bringing school children from outside Geneva, or outside Switzerland is a very big responsibility. So we are also looking at people who could take that responsibility to bring the children. Or of course, uh, the schools in uh, Switzerland, uh, for them, it's very easy to be here. But this is just to provide a glimpse of 
what virtual reality has to offer to the world of education. So of course, this will be open for all of you to get into the classroom, because unfortunately, none of us have experienced that. I haven't in my childhood. So uh, I, I think it will be a great experience for all of us. And uh, to give you an example, uh, this year, the Minister of Rwanda was very impressed by the uh, virtual reality in education experience that was showcased. And he invited our partners to actually uh, do a session with public schools in Rwanda, you know. So this is the kind of impact we also want to have, that the policymakers also uh, notice the innovation and take it back to their countries. Thank you very much. Sir. There is a yes, please. <laughs> Uh, I'd also like to comment on the use. Thank you for this very good question. Also, I agree with G uh, Jitanjit. It's uh, so crucial to bring use to the visits process. And also, it's very difficult, as we have done at UNESCO. You know, we have been engaging with youth regularly through the uh, general conference, which we have uh, once every two years. We built up a youth forum. We, uh, we count on member states to send a youth representative to the forum to engage with politicians, with some policy to discuss those uh, education, culture, uh, communication, uh, science, uh, environment related issues. I think that's a very uh, good practice. Maybe we can also draw to the VCS process and make it more institutionalized. Every year, we have a sort of youth ambassadors to be sent <laughs> to the forum. I mean, the, the, maybe also children, children are more difficult, but I think the, uh, the younger generation is really time. We can't leave them behind the policy making. Uh, making domain and also uh, uh, as UNESCO as a, also a stakeholder of WISIS, we also uh, uh, be able to contribute to the process. We also have several uh, leading projects in, in Arab states. We are training the young journalists. We are training the uh, also in Africa. We are training the people, the young 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 children. Actually, really children. We train them to do the coding in the in the camp. We also have some good practice and can share with the with the forum. And uh, individually, we are also be able to uh, engage with some young ambassadors, experts, and uh, parts we have already engaged with to to suggest and recommend them to participate in the forum and physically as well. maybe also. Rem Motel as well. Thank you. Uh, we'll take you up on that <laughs> for the youth uh, ambassadors, and we will be in touch. I can see uh, our ICC uh, private sector partner. Uh, would you like to please take the floor on the preparations? Thank you, Gitanjali. Um, as you know, uh, the International Chamber of Commerce has been um, participating in the WSIS Forum, um, and we're looking forward for the um, practical examples that we, we can share and, and learn about here um, in the facilitation of the action lines. So we're looking forward to the forum, and we'll be here again next year. Thank you very much. Uh, Gitanjali. Richard, anything okay. from the uh, Civil Society Coordination Group? OK. Uh, Vladimir? Yes, we have a message from our TEDx Geneva partners. Okay. So um, um, I was asked by, by our partners who, who could not be with us today to uh, read out their um, uh, message, uh, and um, they shared their excitement and, and greetings uh, to continuing to work with the VSIS Forum. This will be the third edition of the TEDx Talks at the VSIS Forum. It will take place on 22nd of March in CICG, Room 2. VSIS community is appreciating these visionary talks, and we also pre look forward uh, to this event. The TEDx Geneva team is actively working on the TEDx Geneva 2018 English edition. The theme that um, we are developing is actually a question, and what the day after? Uh, the day after seems far, but it, uh, it is right here now. Uh, it is a common future possible. World and climate is changing. Is society, economy, or justice following? The web is dead, but it's still out there. Do we have a plan to save it? Platforms and data provide solutions and traps. How can we move beyond them? Books are to be read, but can they also be eaten? Is self-medicine an, an alternative? Are we locals, globals, locals, all the same? The day after is today, full of contradictions, fears, and hopes. Let's discover the possibilities, uh, the possible alternatives. Uh, the key dates uh, are in January 2018, announcing the theme on the 8th of January. Save the date. 
and to, to their community, to, our, to the, both the communities, and the open call for ideas uh, is open until 28th of January. Thank you. Thank you, Vladimir. Uh, just a reminder, we are here to listen to your ideas to help us. Yes, please, Monsieur. Uh, Raymond Morel, IFIP. Uh, this year, or for next year, we, uh, we plan uh, three workshops. One uh, with uh, IP3 for IT professionalism, as uh, each year since uh, 2012. A second one uh, with uh, Yoko, the Japanese uh, vice chair of IFIP on disaster and ICT. And uh, ourselves with a G4, with a HDRR, Human Digital Right and Responsibility, in front of uh, AI. We will try to, to give all the documentation till the 10th of January, okay? That's excellent, thank you. Um, we have also seen uh, uh, some interest, uh, just to give you an update on the f submissions that we've received till now. Uh, there are interests from um, some young innovators who are uh, innovating in the area of uh, drones for social good. They've built robots for uh, uh, social good. Uh, also, um, there are a, a group of vloggers, actually, who vlog in the area of social development. Uh, so they are also very interested in uh, seeing the benefits of, uh, um, of vlogging um, uh, in the area of sustainable development. So we are receiving very uh, fresh and new ideas, actually, from the uh, young people who are interested in the uh, VISIS Forum. However, uh, we also must not forget that uh, the VISIS Forum is a part of the, uh, uh, of the VISIS process. And it is very important for us to ensure that uh, the high-level uh, policy sessions, the workshops, all contribute in a meaningful way and show how ICTs, the VISIS action lines in particular, are impacting these sustainable development goals. Um, anyone? else would like to take the floor? Uh, Yaroslav, would you have any updates uh, from the region? Yes, good morning, everyone. Um, well, just two, two points. Um, I think today we, you depicted already that there is quite big interest of the community on contributing with the innovation component to the WISIS Forum. Uh, with the focus on the social good uh, and I think this will be quite good opportunity for the innovation track uh, to make this even stronger uh, with bringing uh, not only the young innovators but also those who are working on the innovation from the systemic point of view but also uh, at the entrepreneurial uh, layer. So therefore, the special efforts uh, are carried out, are done by the uh, different, um, uh, well, regional offices mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. ITU uh, to, bro to bring to the discussion those uh, who are uh, trying to make the real change and advance the digital transformation at the global uh, level. So we, oh, I will use this opportunity to also to call for uh, much more engagement in this uh, track um, to not only uh, to talk about the policies uh, but also to talk about the real concrete uh, projects uh, happening on the ground. The other point which I wanted to raise is the uh, regional work and as we know since many years and the uh, Economic co Commissions uh, f uh, of the UN are working hand in hand uh, with the WISIS uh, platform uh, in order to make the alignment of the WISIS and SDG process uh, happen and strengthen this process. Uh, at the regional level, several fora has emerged which are discussing this uh, process uh, in depth, but not only discussing, but more importantly, uh, also uh, creating the 
platforms where the partnerships are created to uh, advance the implementation of projects on the different wages action lines. We have the examples of the ESQA, uh, we have the examples from the ESCAP and from the other um, uh, regional commissions which we hope uh, to have the reporting and done at the WISIS uh, forum. Uh, of course, with the support, full support of the ITU, original offices, and the support of the uh, WISIS Secretariat and the other UN agencies. Uh, so I'm just drawing attention to this because uh, I think this is something what we, uh, what was evolving, uh, but is getting mature enough uh, to see uh, how uh, we also can act uh, at the regional level uh, and to bring those the global takeaways uh, for annual uh, WISIS forums into the real implementation of the, uh, of the SDGs. In addition uh, to this, I think the uh, one good point is that at the regional level uh, we have a quite good emergence of the uh, development forums for sustainable development, uh, which are um, scheduled per each region uh, and uh, which are building upon uh, certain work done at the uh, regional level uh, by the economic commissions and the facilitating agencies of the uh, of the WISIS process. Uh, and I think that uh, this has quite a lot of potential, uh, not only to mainstream, but also to prioritize certain activities uh, in the, the level of the implementation. Uh, and it would be, uh, I think, useful at the level of the WISIS forum to strengthen this component uh, and to take a look how to also and to close uh, the loop uh, with the proper messaging uh, uh, going into the outcome of the WISIS forum. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yaroslav. Of course, the regional uh, component is very important for the uh, WISIS process in general and the WISIS forum. Uh, the UN regional commissions have their annual meeting uh, with reference to the WISIS at the uh, WISIS forum every year. Uh, we were also very proud to notice that in 2015, ESCAP actually, uh, the membership of ESCAP had uh, uh, passed a resolution on WISIS implementation. Uh, so these are some very uh, good victories for the WISIS process at the regional level. And the Secretariat, as Yaroslav said, is always ready to help you in every which way to provide you with that information. Yes, sir, uh, I think you wanted to take the floor. Yes. Oh, thank you. Um, my name is uh, Mohamed Balgouti. I'm working with uh, Raymond Morel. Um, and uh, I'm also an industrial um, purchaser. So, um, and also an industrial uh, uh, teacher of purchasing and supply chain. So, um, I think that uh, social goods, uh, uh, we, we cannot uh, attain social goods if we, if, we doesn't, if we don't change the way we do business and uh, uh, the way we, um, uh, we make transfer transparency on contract uh, between suppliers and buyers uh, all around the world. So um, my student uh, developed uh, a few months ago a tool um, um, with the K performance indi uh, indicator uh, which respect the 17 SDGs a tool and a code of uh, bon conduite, uh, of good conduct between suppliers and buyer. And uh, um, um, uh, in fact, um, there is uh, uh, no um, uh, social good because we don't have transparency on the supply chain and in the way uh, on the cycle of, of life of production. For example, you have slavery, uh, you have child, we, uh, we work on cocoa plantation, and so on and so on. So the tool we, de we developed uh, allows uh, a total transparency uh, um, uh, on, the, on the product. And uh, I, I will be very happy to, to present it uh, on the next uh, WISIS forum. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. You're very welcome. Uh, of course, IFIP is a very old partner of the WISIS process. In 
and the Visis Forum. Um, I can see Nigel from ICANN also here. Nigel, you were not here, but we appreciated you as a partner. And if you would like to say a few words, please. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, uh, yes, Nigel Hicks and ICANN. I'm sorry I wasn't here, but uh, I always like being appreciated when I'm not here. Uh, yes, well, I mean, j just to say ICANN is delighted to partner with the, uh, with the ITU again on the, uh, on, the, on the WISIS Forum and the other UN agencies. Uh, I, I think uh, the discussions at the WISIS Forum, as, we, as we've just been hearing, can range across a number of uh, issues of, uh, of, of importance to, to, to many people. We'll, certainly be uh, contributing. We'll, we'll perhaps hold a, uh, uh, a, c a couple of workshops on, on relevant issues that uh, ICANN is uh, working on in relation to the, to, to the WISIS action lines. I mean, one of the, one of the issues at the moment for us is, 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 is data protection and data privacy as it relates to the domain name system. So perhaps we might uh, say something on that, but it's, uh, yeah, delightful to be involved. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nigel. Uh, yes, UNESCO, please. Uh, thank you so much. Actually, on privacy issue, UNESCO has been really working on this uh, and advocating privacy uh, protection at with the forum as well. And uh, at beginning, like, uh, we uh, work on the under action line Sina Media, but then we realized such a cross-cutting issues to many action lines rather than only one action line. So I really agree with Nigel that uh, maybe at the WISD forum, we should have uh, maybe a higher level cross-cutting uh, discussions on the issues of uh, privacy and uh, data protection. It's related to the basic internet access. It also so secure the, the security of the infrastructure, but also it's related so much, it's such a crucial uh, issue related to the emerging technology like artificial intelligence, big data, internet of things, etc. is shaping the future of the uh, technology. So that I, I fully endorse that uh, suggestion. And also, if you allow me, I'd like to also comment on the, uh, the SDGs at international level because I was quite inspired by what uh, Jairus Law has said. I understand that uh, in UN, uh, in New York, uh, there, there is a high level political forum. They will discuss the SDG uh, one goal by another every year. I understand in 2019, the SDG 16 will be discussed, uh, addressed by the high level political forum. So would it, be, would it make sense we align with that uh, agenda? I mean, with this and the SDG SDG uh, discussion in a high-level political forum. Uh, maybe next year, in 2018, we can have a sort of high-level discussion about uh, SDG number 16, particularly also because it has a very, very visible uh, mentioning of uh, enabling public access to information and justice which is uh, uh, most closely related to WISIS mandate, and then the outcome can be uh, transmitted to New York uh, to the high-level politicians, then, then we can generate more impact on that. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, UNESCO. Um, so, uh, you know, at the WISIS Forum, the uh, mandate is to uh, provide an equal opportunity to all the WISIS action line facilitators, so all the different WISIS action lines and all the SDGs. So, uh, you know, we cannot really um, focus on one aspect of what the HLPF is discussing because um, we have to pro cater to all the WISIS stakeholders who are working in the different WISIS action lines. But of course, you have a very important point and what we do every year is that uh, we submit a, um, a report from the different action line facilitators on the topic that is discussed uh, during the HLPF. So it is like a, a report from action line facilitators from UNDESA, ITU, UNESCO. So basically all of us uh, who are facilitating the VSIS action lines with respect to the particular topic of that year at the HLPF. So we did it this year and we will uh, do it next year as well. Um, we also submit all the outcomes of the uh, WISIS Forum to the HLPF uh, every year. So uh, that is taken care of. However, at the WISIS Forum, um, it, it would be uh, necessary that uh, it is uh, open to all stakeholders to discuss all WISIS action lines and the connections with all SDGs. Uh, yes, sir, please. Yes, uh, I am Walid Al Sakaf. Uh, I'm here uh, representing uh, the Southern University, uh, where I teach media and communications and media technology. But I also hold uh, have another hat, which is uh, the Internet Society Board uh, of Trustees, uh, which I'm a member. And I'd like to uh, 
put my full support uh, for what you're doing at WISIS, and you've known that uh, ISOC has been a supporter all along. But I'm also interested in uh, exploring with you how you b would consider the notion of multi-stakeholderism going forward and that notion of multi-stakeholder approaches, because that's one thing that has not yet uh, been confined and defined properly in many levels. Do you feel that this is an area that uh, needs more focus, more attention? Uh, another question is emerging technologies. Uh, we've uh, noted the Internet of Things, but there are also the blockchain technology, which is still also uh, emerging and uh, causing somewhat of confusion at many circles, including regulation, etc. Do you feel this needs to be emphasized further and um, bringing in stakeholders from technical uh, community more often? Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, uh, you know the multi-stakeholder question. Um, well, we working for the VISIS uh, know nothing but multi-stakeholderism. I mean, I'm sure all of us know that, that anything we do, it is to include all the stakeholders. Uh, so um, we at the ITU as well, or UNESCO UNCTAD, we always wear two hats. One is to work for our own organization, and second is to work for VISIS. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, very well understood that there is no question that multi-stakeholderism will just strengthen uh, and, and, and its character. Uh, also to strengthen the outcomes of the uh, processes, especially UN processes like WISIS. Um, your, uh, uh, your second question about the, uh, about the, you would yeah, like to, yeah. okay, Catherine, yeah, I can, please. I can yes. I'm, we, we are very open to organize workshop with, at your proposals uh, with on new technology. I can give you the example of this year. We had a, a workshop on quantum computing which was very well attended and very, very well perceived. And we are open, propose the workshop, and we'll be open to do so. Well, this is exactly the reason why we have this meeting and the open consultation process to hear what you would like to see at the VISIS Forum. So please do submit this input and also suggest who we could contact, who would you like to see at the VISIS Forum discussing these topics as well. So thank you very much. Uh, you. Yes. I just want to echo my ITU colleagues. I, I mean, to be objective, in past uh, decades, uh, I have seen such an improvement of multi stakeholder participation in WCS mm -hmm. Forum. Uh, I think we are having the one who have attended uh, the first, uh, even the, f before the WCS Forum was created. I mean, we had some facility meetings we took place in Paris, in Geneva, and different places. Yeah, I have seen such an increasing interest and participation from private sector, from technical community, NGO, civil society, even media media journalist in the forum, it's really a, I mean, one, never, one can never have a perfect process in any conference, but uh, but this is it's really strengthening and uh, I saw such a big advancement, but again, I count on everyone, as you are participating in IDF, you also uh, need to take an active role to participate in this. as Jitanji uh, just mentioned, you can even uh, nominate the facilitators, you shape the themes, uh, subjects, substantial aspect to discuss, it's really count on you are very, very substantial participation in it to shape the business process to be a very, even better uh, way to get the people involved. Thank you, uh, sir, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm wearing, my name is Winston Roberts, I'm from New Zealand, I'm wearing various hats. Um, one is from the library sector, um, as a member of IFLA, which is, of course, one of the NGO um, multi-stakeholder participants. And in my daily occupational capacity, I also am a government servant. So, um, but I'm not here speaking as a government servant of New Zealand. Um, I'd just like to make one comment and ask one question. First of all, the comment, I'm very glad to hear from UNESCO that SDG 16 will be discussed at the UN and I would like to talk with you offline about that possibly and get some more information about it if, if you have five minutes after the session um, wearing my IFLA hat. Um, but my, comment, my, my question is just remembering that the chair said to us at the beginning of the session or sometime earlier in the session that the WISIS forum is non-budgetary. I'm just concerned by that and I just wonder if the process itself, the WISIS Forum, is sustainable in the long term. 
Can you reassure us on that question? Thank you. Regarding your comments, uh, every year, uh, HLPLF will review five of the SDGs, but every year they are reviewing SDG 17, and uh, as being a, a, a public servant, each country can contribute to this revision by a voluntary, on a voluntary basis. I mean, I, we invite you to contribute, New Zealand to contribute to this process next year, if uh, this will be the case. For the second uh, question? Yes, uh, uh, we can assure you from ITU and the co-organizers that uh, we will uh, do our best to make sure that the Visis Forum uh, continues and keeps growing as it is. Uh, but uh, we are also uh, working very closely with all our partners, and I can see several of them sitting in our room now, after I can quite a few others also joined, um, who will be supporting us because they find value in what uh, we are doing. And it is uh, helping um, uh, our main goal, as Yaroslav said, is to reach the uh, regional level, the national level, and to see clear impact of what we are doing at the global level. You know, So uh, I, I don't think our partners will withdraw from their contributions. And in fact, we also uh, welcome New Zealand to contribute <laughs> to the Visis Forum and be a partner. <laughs> we will be in touch with you, sir. <laughs> Uh, Gitanjali, I have a, a surprising uh, suggestion. Last year, in December, at the UN uh, General Assembly, they received a sensibilization from uh, Stefan Ibaraki on AI. Okay? And then, uh, after that, he has some money to have the AI for good three days before the the last June uh, uh, with this forum. Next year it will be in May. And since this period, uh, everybody say, due to AI, you will solve every problem. And you have no idea, no critical spirit. Can you arrange, I know it's very difficult what I, I am asking for you, arrange to have an intervention of Stefan Hawkins to the next WISIS forum. I know it's difficult to transport, but maybe uh, with uh, telecommunication you can uh, do miracle. But I like to have somebody who is not in the same way of all these enthusiasm and unresponsible people. Uh, thank you. We take up your challenge. Yeah. We will <laughs> contact uh, Mr. Stephen Hawkins. In fact, I know that our colleagues from UNESCO, yeah. they have had video addresses from him. So if not him being here physically present, uh, we will try through our colleagues to at least have a video address uh, from Stephen Hawkins. Yes. Mm -hmm. So maybe at the, to a minimum, maybe a video address. We will definitely try. Thank you very much for that suggestion. Mexico, yes, please. Yes, thank you very much, and thank you for this um, meeting. I think it's very important, and then just to highlight the um, the work done by um, ITU and the WISIS Forum uh, in relation with the uh, action lines and SDGs, I think it's more than pertinent. Uh, and um, the, you have been uh, working with this issue for a, for a while, which I think is great. And just to follow up on the comment about uh, the possibility to include uh, other new technologies on the on this uh, occasion, I think it's important because um, uh, for many of us it's clear the effect that these new technologies are having on their real life and of course on the implementation of ODS I think is more than pertinent just to support that. Thank you very much. Okay, so I think we are running out of time. Yeah. Kathleen just reminded me. So thanks a lot for... But uh, before before yes. concluding, I would like to invite all of you to visit our exhibition. We are oh, organizing, yes. we have here, it's, it's corner AB. It's just uh, here. Just here on, in front of the library. Yeah. 
because we discuss about uh, photo contest, you may see some of the products from this year, yeah? Exactly. Uh, we've displayed our prize-winning photog photographs as well as there. Mexico is there, so, and also many others. So please do go and have a look at our corner. Thank you very much for your suggestions. All of them are noted. They will be a part of the uh, agenda, you will see. And if it is not, please remind us. Uh, we look forward to receiving your suggestions by the 30th of uh, January. And uh, we look forward to welcoming you all at the Visis Forum 2018. Thank you very much. Thank you.